The following is a presentation of HBO Sports. Pretty boy Floyd, lifestyle so flashy. Mayweather pounding, pounding. I'm the best, the creme de la creme. What a display of skill by Mayweather. I'm the champ, the world champ. They can't beat me, they better join me. Welcome to Floyd Mayweather's world. The super quickness of Floyd Mayweather produces a knockdown. A world where speed and power dominate the landscape. Brilliant, clean, hard shots for pretty boy Floyd. And where unmatched talent and skill have elevated Mayweather to the preeminent boxing force on the planet. Much of the crowd is in awe of the display that Mayweather's putting forth. Less than five months ago, the world was again treated to a Floyd Mayweather masterpiece as he dismantled boxing's human highlight film, Arturo Gatti. Right hands by Mayweather land like lasers. On this night, all the highlights belong to pretty boy Floyd. It's getting brutal in there as Mayweather fires at will. Combinations by Mayweather. Too much speed, maybe too much power too. The virtuoso performance reinforced his claim as boxing's pound for pound best. Tonight, Mayweather begins his quest for a title in a fourth different weight class, testing the waters at welterweight against Sean Bay Mitchell. Another edition of World Championship Boxing, brought to you live in high definition from the Rose Garden in Portland, Oregon. Tonight, boxing's reigning pound-for-pound -pound king, Floyd Mayweather, takes on former 140-pound title holder, Sean Bay Mitchell, in Floyd's first fight at 147 pounds. Just five months ago, Mayweather turned in a performance for the ages, brutalizing Arturo Gatti to claim a 140-pound title. Tonight, Floyd moves one class up the scale to 147 to put his considerable skills to the test for the first time as a welterweight, taking on a veteran southpaw fighter, Sean Bay Mitchell. And hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this special ed edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing, which brings us to Portland, Oregon, an unusual venue for boxing. First time we've been here since three years ago when Roy Jones fought against Clinton Woods. Roy at the time, number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport. Now Portland again welcomes the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport, Mayweather, to this venture against Charm Bay Mitchell. Mayweather moved to that top spot on the list without any question whatsoever. When one week after Bernard Hopkins' narrow loss to Jermaine Taylor in June, he took on Arturo Gatti and put on the virtuoso performance to which we've already referred. Since that time, Mayweather has looked for the right kind of fight to commemorate his new status as the top boxer in the sport, and a lot of people say this shouldn't necessarily have been it. But recently, our Larry Merchant sat down with the new number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in boxing to assess Floyd Mayweather and his view from the top. Floyd Mayweather promised exactly this. He promised he would humiliate Arturo Gatti before his fans. Floyd, did the victory over Arturo Gatti do everything for you that you had hoped? Absolutely. It put me in a um, posi position to be a just be a legend in the sport. What did it mean to you personally to finally become officially recognized as the pound for pound best? All my life I knew eventually one day um, I was going to be the best fighter in the world. You know, I kept my fingers crossed. I said my prayers every day. I believed. My team believed in me. And I'm here now. I'm the truth. And yet you are not the champion of the junior welterweight division. Ricky Hatton is recognized as the champion. I don't need a belt. A belt, a belt don't make Floyd Mayweather. I'm not really worried about what Ricky Hatton do, because he's not a risk taker like me. If he was a risk taker, we'd be fighting coming over the 19th. I was willing to go over to England and make the fight happen, but um, this guy didn't want to make the fight happen. You know me, I'm Floyd Mayweather. I never duck or dodge nobody. 
Floyd Mayweather is willing to fight any fighter from 154 on down. You bring him and I'll take him. You talk about fighting De La Hoya, you wind up fighting Brucellus, who's not even ranked. You talk then about fighting Winky Wright, and you wind up fighting Charmbay Mitchell. I mean, is there a kind of a bait and switch here? You talk about fighting stars, and you wind up fighting guys who are not as big. It's not that I'm, I'm not going to fight the big fights. It's just that um, I, ca I can't force these guys to fight me. So even though these, these guys like Winky Wright don't want to fight, Shane Mosley don't want to fight, Zab Judah don't want to fight, that's not going to put my career on hold. I have a job to do, so stay active. If you can't fight the best, you fight the guy that's right under the best. If you can't fight those guys, you fight the guy that's right up under those guys. Brilliant, brilliant performance. You've had a lot of big wins, and yet, for some reason, your popularity as an attraction has not kept up with your success in the ring. Why do you think that is? I'm not worried about being popular. I'm worried about being a legend in the sport of boxing. And 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you can mark my word. They, the people will say Floyd Mayweather is the best fighter ever. What do you think are the greatest misconceptions about you? Uh, I'm just Floyd. I'm one of a kind. I feel, I feel I, stand, I stand out. I'm different. Floyd switches to a southpaw stance for the second time in the fight. Third time, he says. Thank you for the correction, <laughs> Floyd. Thanks for the correction. The younger Floyd would say things that he shouldn't say. And I'm a little bit older now, so I'm a little bit wiser. It's a lot of things that I want to say that I keep in. Let's play a, a kind of word game. Absolutely. Come on, let's do this. That's what I like. <laughs> Bling. Love diamonds. Diamonds are a man's best friend. Your favorite possession? Life. Not the Rolls Royce, not the Hummer. Not the Rolls Royce, not the Ferrari, not the mansion. Life. They can have it all back. I just want to live a long time. True or false? You go to a club and spend $10,000 on champagne in a night. Has it ever happened? <laughs> uh, that's a little bit overboard. That's a little bit overboard. What, if anything, are you doing to think about, prepare for your post-fight life? I'm going to be commentating with you, believe it. I'll be there right next to you at HBO, and I'm going to be sitting right in that seat that you're sitting in, doing that to the, fight, the fighter. I want to do it. I, hopefully, I can do it longer as you do it. Boom! Big left hook. The assumption in boxing is you're just too quick, too well-schooled. You've been doing what you do <laughs> since you could stand up. Yes. Okay. But that's not the reason why I'm winning. It's not that I'm fast. It's not that I'm strong. It's not because I come from a family of fighters. It's because I'm the smartest up here. There's no fighter out there that can match me up here. What is it going to take to beat you? Me slacking, me not training hard. You beating yourself? Not in the old age. Definitely not in the old age. I mean, you're not going to beat 20-year-olds when you're 60. Oh. Hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I get crushed. <laughs> I get crushed like I'm crushing guys. You know, I'm in my 20s beating guys in their 20s like, like they look 60. <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna throw no names out there, but they know who they is. The dazzling smile of Floyd Mayweather Jr. back live now at the Rose Garden in Portland with Larry Merchant. And Larry, I, Larry and I want to remind you to stay tuned immediately following this live telecast for the countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2, which follows immediately here on HBO. <clears throat> Larry, I mentioned that some writers and commentators have criticized this bout. Sean Bay Mitchell has about the same qualifications as the kind of guys that Floyd Mayweather has been fighting for the last couple of years. So why does Floyd draw abuse for this opponent? Because he has continuously raised the expectation that he's going to have the big, exciting events. He's going to fight fighters who can fight back on his level. Next time, soon, eventually, he loudly challenged the bigger Winky Wright, then quietly folded when, his, uh, when he was called on the bluff. He proclaims he'll fight anyone. Then he suffers a little amnesia that he rejected the very tough, rugged Antonio Margarito. But he does speak truth when he says 
that he is the truth as a fighter. He is an exceptional fighter. And tonight, he's fighting another long, long shot. Indeed. Okay, Mayweather's first uh, trip to 147, but Sean Bay Mitchell is only in his second fight at 147. We mentioned that three years ago, Roy Jones fought here, partially because of Jones's relationship with the Jordan division of Nike. Now Floyd Mayweather Jr. is the second fighter to have that relationship, and Roy knew Sean Bay Mitchell all the way back in their amateur days. Is there anything that Sean Bay, as a skilled boxer, can do to contend on that level with Mayweather, or is he reduced here to having to brawl, which isn't his style? I feel like he's reduced to having to brawl. Main reason is because he's older. When he was a young fighter, he was as similar to what a Floyd Mayweather is now, except he's a little bit smaller than Floyd now. Therefore, he wasn't a puncher like Floyd was, but he was a good boxer. Right now, Floyd is a much better boxer, much quicker, much more powerful. So I think Sean Bay's only real chance is to get lucky, hit the lotto, land a big punch. <laughs> Sean Bay Mitchell at 35 believes he's seen everything in the sport. Some might suggest he hasn't seen talent like Floyd Mayweather's. Let's take a look at what Mitchell's last 24 hours have been like here in preparation for this appointment against Mayweather. Our cameras followed him throughout that experience. So actually, I don't know your name. Sean B. Mitchell. Okay. Is that here? No. No. This is years, Jack Jack. Huh? We just what I want to wander away, you know. Um, and I, I know, I know that's where you know I like to be. <laughs> you think about all the time you spent in training camp, and um, you know, you just think to yourself, you know, it's one time, this one night, you know, give it your all and give and leave it all there. He's number one on the pound for pound list. Yeah, which is great. Is he a better fighter than the Costa Zoo you've been in the ring with? Oh, yeah, he's a better fighter than the Costa Zoo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he's undefeated. I take nothing away from him. He's, he's accomplished a, a lot of, you know, a lot of things. Did um, you have any brothers or sisters or anybody who had gone to college? No, none. None at all. Were you the first one in the whole? I was whole? the first one. Right. And I, I, that's why I, I want to go back and just get the degree. I really don't need it, but I just want to have that certificate on my wall. Big luck. We'll see you guys later. Right. Thank you, Sean. Good luck. All right. You know, I used to get nervous, but now it's just like I'm in it. So, you know, can't get out of it. I don't really get like that. I, I get more like, shh, you know, can we just get to the arena? Let's get this thing on. Let's get this in and over with, you know. Let's get this, this work on. HBO come on at 9.45 our time. So we're talking 6.45. 6 what do you got him on? But he don't wanna he don't wanna go over there and just sit, you know, no. over there either. No, I ain't want to be over there that really. Five. Probably about that. About five, five thirty. Yeah, I'm just ready to rock and roll, man. I'm just uh, I'm ready to put all this hard work I've, I've done and just put it into action now. And, um, you know, it's just it's just time to, it's time to do it. Um, it's time to um, silence all the naysayers. Grab that joint just in case, bro. That one hanging up. No, leader, Jack. He got him, he got him. I like the night turn back. At 5.07 Pacific time, Mitchell arrived here at the Rose Garden Arena for a fight which was to take place 
a little less than two hours later. Sean Bay Mitchell's first fight at 147 pounds, June 11 this year against Chris Smith, ended with a headbutt under Mitchell's left eye, which both cut him and left the bruise, which you see there still more than five months later. Mitchell says there's no pain, but the color from the bruise simply hasn't dissipated, and who knows when it will. Mitchell is uh, an interesting kid. A couple of years at college, Howard and University of Maryland studying business. Says he had a band called Paradise. Played the drums, played the trumpet, other instruments. Has five children. Had a good career, never beat an elite fighter. But he's been out there for 16, 17 years. One of the difficulties of not being a big puncher in this sport is that as you get older, get into your middle 30s, Roy, you're going to be fighting quicker fighters. And it's very hard to outbox someone who's quicker than you are. You are exactly right. And that's what my point was earlier, that it's much more difficult for him to outbox a young guy now than it would have been back in his day. Mitchell's two biggest fights in his career, both against Costa Zoo. Both ended in devastating knockout losses. The last one was really devastating a year ago, four knockdowns. Let me correct that. The first fight against Zoo ended in a technical decision when he injured his left knee. The second one was the knockout. And incidentally, the injury to Charm Bay's left knee was so severe that he says he still has to spend significant time at every training session stretching, rehabbing the knee, and working with it before he can actually get into the ring and spar. He first tore his ACL, and then eventually, in another injury, tore all the support structure around the ACL. Now, here comes the man who is probably the most gifted athletic spe specimen in the sport at this very moment, Floyd Mayweather, Jr. There's a crowd, Roy, really about half the size of your crowd a few years ago. You drew about 13,000. Do you think he's going to become the kind of popular player that will fill these venues someday? Yeah, I think he will. It'll take him a few more years to do it, but I think he'll get to that because he's willing to fight people. He's willing to fight people at big risk. And as long as he continues to go on the road he's going on, people will soon buy into Floyd Mayweather because he is a very, very good fighter. Yeah, if his market power ever catches up to his talent, that will be a cosmic force in the sport. And you can see how easily he has dispatched most opponents. His, his most difficult challenge in the eyes of many was going to be the night that he fought Diego Corrales. There were many ringsiders who were picking Corrales. Mayweather knocked him down a half dozen times. Our, our uh, tail of the tape for Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Sean Bay Mitchell doesn't offer much encouragement for Mitchell. Take a look and you're gonna see the seven year age advantage for Mayweather, a one inch height advantage, a four and a half inch arm length advantage when measured from the armpit to the end of the fifth. They weighed in, Floyd right on the 147 pound limit, Mitchell a pound and three quarters under. One pound. In the interim, Mayweather has only put on one pound while Mitchell has added nine and three quarters pounds, suggesting that Mayweather was in absolutely perfect or sensational shape when he reached the weigh in yesterday. He says that his walking around weight is 147 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather Jr. Sean Bay Mitchell fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and they cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! All right, thank you very much, Harold. Our ring announcer tonight is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, let's go to Jimmy for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Rose Garden here in Portland, Oregon. 
as Goose to the promotions and presenting a sponsor, Jordan Brand, a division of Nike, present the featured bout of the evening, pound for pound king battle of champions, brought to you by sportsbook.com. At this time, we introduce to you our judges, as appointed by the Oregon State Boxing Commission, from Oregon, Greg Baker. From Nevada, Dwayne Ford. And also from Oregon, Jim Howard. Introducing at this time our third man in the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a welterweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Portland, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim. He is fighting out of our nation's capital of Washington, D.C., by way of Tacoma Park, Maryland. He weighed in at a ready 145 and one quarter pounds, with a record of 56 wins, four losses. He has 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBA super lightweight champion of the world, known as the Little Big Man, introducing Shonda Mitchell. And his opponent across the ring, ready to go on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing brown trunks with black trim, hailing from Grand Rapids, Michigan, now residing in Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds even. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a perfect record of 34 wins, no losses, 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is one of boxing's pound for pound greats, the three-time world champion and the current WBC super lightweight champion of the world, introducing the undefeated pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. Once again, a referee in charge, Richard Steele, now to give instructions. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dress room. Question you again, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands and good luck. Is this going to be a concert? Starring the solo artist Floyd Mayweather Jr., or will it be a contest that Charmaine Mitchell makes? We shall soon find out. The word on behalf of expert commentator Roy Jones playing in pain tonight, working with a very bad cold, but hanging in. Good for you, Roy. Thank Round you. one begins. And let's see if uh, Mitchell, a boxer throughout his career, will try to do something to surprise Mayweather in the early going. Doesn't look that way. Very hard for the Leopard to change its spots. Charm Bay does look heavy up top in his second appearance at 147. Floyd trying, trying to catch him right quick with a good punch to see can he go ahead and hurt him early. Floyd Mayweather, over the course of the past year, two years, has gradually and steadily increased the power on his straight right hand. Most devastating punch. Right. He's gone from being a knockout possibility to, in many instances, a knockout puncher. Well, that's what he's trying to do here. He's trying to get Coach Charbet, go ahead and turn this into a quick fight and lay on big punches early. Right hand to the body by Mayweather. Mayweather blocking almost all of those punches with his elbows and forearms. And as Roy Jones says, sizing up Mitchell Great. and looking to land Step a big shot in the early going. 
I think he's looking to see which, where the punches are coming from, um, how Mitchell really operates. As he said in that interview, he is a very smart fighter along with his physical skills. I think he's trying to find out right away can Sean May take his punch. And there's, uh, the, there's the question. That was the right hand that was determined to find out whether Sean Bay could take it. Mitchell took it pretty well, but not those two. Now Sean Bay begins to hold on. Mayweather's clocked him with three big shots. One that's left and two rights. There's another right and a left hook, and Sean Bay's in trouble. And that's what he's trying to find out right away. Left hook lands solidly. And he's moving Mitchell with these punches. Now Mitchell starts to hold his ground a little better. Not allowing Mayweather to land a combination by grabbing after the first big hit. Another straight right hand for Mayweather. And that hurt Mitchell. Even though it was very short. Round one is a dem demonstration of Floyd Mayweather's economical precision as he chooses only those opportunities that allow him to land big shots. Okay, use them legs, baby, and keep that head moving. All right, don't sit there and try to trade with him. Okay, keep that head moving and use these legs, baby. Okay. Fighting on for fucking fear. Keep, keep walking to him. The more that motherfucker move, he ain't gonna try to fight, he's gonna try to hold. PC Mayweather with the first straight right hand lead right down the barrel, which is what he was waiting for the whole time. Trying to find out if Sean could take his punch. There's another right hand followed by a beautiful left hook, which knocked Sean B off battle. But Sean surprisingly took those punches very well. And took him better and better as the round went on, which makes some sense. Punches in round one by copy box count. Mitchell throwing 46, but landing only three. Mayweather ignoring the jab through mostly power shots, 34 punches, and landed 13 of them. But 12 of those 13 lands were power shots. Of course, Mitchell in the southpaw stance. That's one of the reasons that Mayweather hasn't thrown many jabs, more likely to land the straight right hand, which is, in many instances, his most devastating punch. Left hook for Mayweather. You heard Buddy McGirt, chief second in the corner of Sean Bay Mitchell, not Mitchell's trainer, that's Marvin Sims. McGirt was talking in the corner and said, go use your legs. How in the world could you use your legs against a fighter with Mayweather's legs? And especially when you got a bad knee already. Because the only chance is to gamble in his trade with him for a knockout. Well, what he's saying is he just doesn't want him to stay in there in the, in the range of Mayweather. Mayweather landed a right hand. Now stalking Mitchell into the corner. Sean Bay wisely slips away along the ropes and back into the center of the ring. If Mayweather can get Mitchell pinned against the ropes, he'll unleash a barrage of right hands. At least that's my prediction. <laughs> Now, the referee Richard Steele, I thought he yelled, no spinning. He said, don't spin him. Oh. Sean Bay throwing a straight left hand and going out to Floyd's left and spinning, getting behind Floyd. Mitchell trying to find a variety here that will throw Mayweather off. Mayweather's already demonstrated 
He's not going to extend himself looking to pile up points here in the early rounds. He figures he can land something and get rid of it. Quick jab by Mayweather. Two rounds, Sean Bay Mitchell is working, but really hasn't landed a single significant punch to try to keep Floyd Mayweather off of it. And they go at it at the end of the second round. As, just as I said that, Mitchell finally did land something over the top. Immediately following this telecast, stay tuned for Countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2. An in-depth look at Jermaine Taylor's title-winning effort over Nard Hopkins back in July and analysis of their upcoming rematch. Tuesday, November 29, catch the next installment of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, a peek into the world of today's sports groupies. December 3 on HBO Pay-Per-View, it's the highly anticipated rematch between new middleweight champion Jermaine Taylor and the former champion Bernard Hopkins. And December 10, World Championship Boxing returns with Winky Wright taking on Sam Solomon. Camacho landed that left hand at the end of the round. The question now is, is he going to become a little bolder? I doubt it. Combi box numbers in round two. Mayweather 13 out of 43. Sean Bay Mitchell 9 out of 57. Mitchell with a, an overhand left at the top of the round. Mayweather doesn't often get hit by punches that come from conventional angles. On the rare occasions when he's been hit and momentarily wobbled by Demarcus Corley, for instance, it was usually on a looping punch that comes from outside the visual range. Thus the advisability of trying to brawl against a guy like that. Yep, such a sharp fighter like Mayweather, when you're that sharp, you're trained to throw sharp punches and you're trained to defend against sharp punches, not wild looping punches. So the wild looping punches usually are off ribbon for him. First knockdown of the fight comes on a straight right hand. Right into the mouth of Mitchell. Beautiful double right hand at that. that Mitchell landed at the end of the second round didn't help him, it hurt him because it demonstrated to Mayweather he can take Mitchell's punch. Well, Mayweather been lower than anyway. That's why he came out and fight the fight he's fighting. He knew he could take uh, Mitchell's punch. He was just wondering, could Mitchell take his punch? And that's what he came to find out right away. And he makes it tough for Mitchell because Mitchell's in here. He outweighs Floyd, but he doesn't throw his big punches Floyd and he can't really take Floyd's big punch. Tough situation for him to be in, but he's trying. And he's trying hard. One thing Floyd Mayweather does brilliantly is to use his lead shoulder as a defensive shield when he attacks. He keeps his shoulder in a great position to protect his chin. It's very hard to find an open shot against Floyd Mayweather, even when he's coming at you. That was not a knockdown, a slip. But every time a fighter has to get up from the canvas, he expends a little bit more energy. Yep. <laughs> Mitchell with a good body shot after Mayweather landed an uppercut, but by and large, after dominating the first two rounds easily, Floyd Mayweather has knocked Sean Bay Mitchell down in the third round, trying to keep progressing toward a knockout victory.
He's catching. He's throwing the right hand to the body first. Out. Okay. But keep walking. Keep walking to his right. But throw the right hand to the body. Throw the right hand over the body. Throw right back up top. You hit him anyway. He's breaking his neck. All he's gonna do. Here you see Flora attacking with the straight right lead. Caught him beautiful on the chin with the right lead and down with Mitchell. With a good sneak straight right hand straight down the pipe, which is usually the best punch against the southpaw. They see it again, straight right lead, right on the chin. Mitchell could do nothing about it. Too much quickness. It's amazing because the opponent knows that Mayweather's looking to throw a straight right hand in that situation, but he's so quick with it that you can't stop it anyway. Harold, how do you have it through three? Three rounds to nothing, 30 to 26. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Jim, you got to give him an extra point for knocking Mitchell up off of his feet in the third round, and that accounts for the four-point lead by Mayweather. I got to talk about two rules real quick. Number one, Mayweather keeps that left hand across his chest and watch him use the elbow. You see the way he raised the elbow? You can't hit a guy with an elbow. You can't lift up his jaw with an elbow. Secondly, Richard Steele allowed John Bay Mitchell to bang Floyd Mayweather Jr. in the first round on that waistband. Now, I'll tell you, I think that he should let him hit him on a waistband because it's just not a, day, a damaging blow. There it is again. One of the most assertive, assault, assertive assaults of the fight by Mitchell, who seems to realize that he's going to need to go ahead and fight if he's going to avoid simply becoming cannon fodder. Here. Exactly. If he don't start a fight, he's just going to be a punching bag, and that's what he's turned into slowly here. Great. Incidentally, in the early part of this round, Michael Jordan made a belated entry into the arena and is seated now at ringside. Mayweather is so aware of everything that goes on around the ring that I rather suspect he knows Jordan arrived during this round. Oh, yeah, he knows it. We've had situations in the past in which Floyd would hear things that I say during commentary in the fight and turn and comment to me on what I've just said, offering editorials from the ring while fighting. And Shumby seems to be tiring a little bit now. Comes a point in the fight when a veteran fighter has to decide, am I going to really try to win this fight or am I going to try to survive? I don't think that Mitchell can do the kind of brawling you suggested he might have to. Roy, it's like asking a, a tailor to make a car. Well, the trouble is, if you want to trade with Floyd, you've got to face his hand speed. And Mitchell has gotten hit with another hard right hand here that's setting up more stuff along the ropes. And while Mitchell admirably is firing back and trying to fight, he's getting hit too much. Yep, and he's throwing leaving punches, and the ropes will catch his hands a lot of times with leaving punches. And that's not good for him because he's not going to catch Floyd with those leaving punches when Floyd's that close to him. Gain his balance from a push. Mayweather can still <laughs> land a right hand in close quarter. Keep walking that motherfucker down. Keep walking him down. And when you get close to him, then you let your hands go. But keep walking and keep trying to throw the right hand to the body. Keep, he ain't doing what trying to survive. We're going to keep walking his ass down. How you feel? Good, okay. He turned in this man. You don't have to bet straight up. I'm done, bud. Don't load up, man. You gotta let your hands go and you right. gotta stay off the ropes, babe. Right, right. Just yeah. keep him turning. Okay. Don't stand up, don't go straight back. He see Floyd on the attack with the right hand, followed by left hook and another right hand. Sean Bay just got his hands high. That body shot hurt him a little bit, but he kept his hands high, defended his head real well on that. And there's the aforementioned Jordan at ringside. Bluetooth technology visible in the left ear. I wonder how many people have the number. 
<laughs> no, you do. Total punches through four. Mayweather 58 out of 162. Mitchell 24 out of 196. John Bay Mitchell throwing more punches than Floyd Mayweather. But getting hit a lot more as well. <laughs> As much as this fight was criticized by some on the web and some boxing writers, Mitchell certainly hasn't been the same kind of sitting duck for Mayweather's stuff that Artur Gatti was in the big pay-per-view fight back in June. No, I think he has, he's had a good showing for himself so far. A lot of people didn't expect him to do this well. I think he's had a very good showing for himself. It's Mayweather right along the belt line. Richard Steele says keep him up. Don't hold him, don't hold him. Pretty good idea to keep hitting that belt line if he can. The closest Floyd Mayweather ever came to losing a professional fight is when he was strafed along the ropes through the latter stages of his first bout with Jose Luis Castillo, and Castillo got to his ribcage. But that's not Sean Bay's style. Sean Bay is a boxer. He's not accustomed to putting that type of pressure on the floor Mayweather, so. trying to rake Mayweather over the top with left hands. Mayweather just picking his spots, waiting patiently, being efficient, landing power punches when he can, mostly hard right hands. It looked to me as though Mayweather had decided to go out and look for a knockout and gave Sean Bay some opportunities. Mayweather landed a stunning left hook. Punching it out. Step back. And he's still looking for a knockout. Mayweather in a southpaw stance now. Changing the angle slightly. Giving himself a land to jab. And then raking Sean Bay Mitchell with a great straight left hand. I think that left hand hurt him. <laughs> yeah, there aren't many southpaws that throw it better than that. <laughs> back to the right hand stance and stings Mitchell with one more right before the end of the round. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stick around for the premiere of Countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2, a documentary style look back at the circumstances surrounding Taylor's controversial decision over Hopkins back in July and a look ahead to their upcoming rematch. The only regret I have for the first fight is that when I had him hurt, I didn't stop it. I didn't finish it. And I will finish him this time. I feel like I still have something to prove. I feel like I'm going in there, I'm fighting for my belts all over again. I, I have to bring those belts home with me again. Countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2, premiering tonight, immediately following the Stella cast. Just through round five, Mayweather 56 out of 133, Mitchell 24 out of 125. Charm Bay Mitchell, who threw 81 punches per round in his last fight against Chris Smith, managing to average 49 punches per round here, which is a pretty good punch out punch put against Mayweather. Yeah, he couldn't get off at all. But here he has to keep his hands at home on defense a lot because Florida's throwing some of the punches at him. Like that. Another blistering straight right hand from Mayweather. He started to mix the left hook in a little bit more in the last couple of rounds. And by mixing the left hook in more, he set up the right hand again. That was a hard right hand to the body. Don't often see that. Mayweather has great discipline and great intuition in the ring. That's where that right hand to the body comes from. Break. Watch your head. Banging of heads. 
Mayweather grimaced and keeps feeling his right eyebrow to see whether there's blood. There's none. He comes out and rakes Mitchell with a left hook. Good left hook by Floyd. Step back, step back. Quick, precise. Hitting a moving target as it's coming in. <laughs> Sean Bay can't win this fight on the outside like this. I don't know why he won't just go ahead and try to fight because he's getting picked apart out here. Boy, do you think that Mayweather has the power to impose himself on a real strong welterweight? Yes, he Second does. knockdown. This time the knockdown is on a body shot. We've seen a lot of knockouts on body shots in recent years. Mitchell's in no hurry to get up, and that's that. I think Richard Steele saw the territory in front of us. Mitchell tried, but he was behind. If this round had counted, he'd be behind um, eight points in six rounds. So how close was he really? Not close at all. You think with one punch, Roy, he can hurt a strong runway? Uh, not a full fledged welterweight. He'll take an accumulation like he's been doing. Uh, for Sharp to take his punch that well showed you that a person that's been in the welterweight division will take his punch a little bit better than that. Let's make it specific. Should he fight Antonio Margarito, who yeah, is the should. strongest of the welterweights, I think? Yeah, he should. There was a straight right hand to the body. Sharp Mitchell was not ready for that punch. He already was getting very fatigued, and you knew it wouldn't be but a matter of time at this point. Another look. Straight right hand to the body. Best punch against the southpaw. Caught him when he wasn't ready. Caught him right in the middle of the punch, too. Roy Jones against Virgil Hill. Arturo Gatti against Leonard Doreen. Quite a number of body shot knockouts in recent years on this telecast. And there's another one as Floyd Mayweather finally put Charm Bay Mitchell away in the sixth round with a right hand body shot. Mayweather dominating the fight both from the perspective of his boxing skill and his punching power. I got a bay. You got a bay? Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. now for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, five seconds in round number six. A referee in charge, Richard Steele, reaches the count of ten. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. It wasn't the big crowd, but those who were here appreciated what they saw. A final look at CompuBox numbers, Mayweather versus Mitchell. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. landing at about a 40% rate compared to about a 10% rate for the opponent, Mitchell. Power punching numbers, and uh, here Mayweather's connect percentage goes up, as does Mitchell's marginally. But at the end of the day, 65 to 24 in landed power punches. And Mayweather's punch is by far the harder. Really, Mitchell only landed two overhand lefts that mattered in the fight. Let's go to Larry Merchant standing by with the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing, Floyd Mayweather. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Floyd. It looked as though you came out determined to get a knockout. You weren't just pretty boy, you wanted to be tough boy tonight. Well, first off, I want to thank God for this victory. You know, thank, thank Jordan Brand and Nike. Thank Al Hammond and thank Team Mayweather. You know, without without them, all this wouldn't be possible. And you know, after coming off the Arturo Gotti win, I tried to come out. And yes, I did tonight. Try to rush the knockout, and I got hit with a couple of shots that I feel I shouldn't got hit with tonight. But you know, I still came out victorious. Did he ever sting you? Oh, uh, Sean Bay hit me with a good shot. I mean, I mean, it's not a shot I never felt before. But Sean Bay's a good fighter. Like I said before, he only had two losses in the last 12 years, so that's why we took the fight. We tried to fight all the main fighters, but then none of those guys want to fight us, so we fought Sean Bay. All right. Why the body shots? Was he just, did you make him so conscious of the head shots that he was leaving himself well, open? Actually, um, uh, Sean Bay kind of surprised me. He, you know, he had a good head movement. So I see if a guy, uh, you know, the body can't move, but the head can move. So I took my time tonight, uh, stayed relaxed. And uh, uh, my Uncle Roger told me to go to the body. And uh, I went to the body, and tonight I got the victory. 
Would you have beaten Uncle Roger in his prime? Uh, that would have been a great fight. You know, I got a lot of respect for my Uncle Roger. You know, I want to thank you for coming out to my house doing an interview. Thank HBO, because without all you guys, this wouldn't be possible. Okay. There's been some talk of you fighting Zeb Judah next. What uh -huh. stands in the way? Uh, like I said before, uh, we look, we want to fight Zeb Judah. I've been asked for that fight. Uh, after the Arturo Gotti fight, we uh, I mean, uh, actually, me and Zab supposed to have fought tonight. Uh, but, you know, me and Sean Bay end up fighting. But, like I said before, I want to fight the best they got there. I would love to fight Zab Judah. I, I, know, love to fight. I know you say this, but it appears that when you get below that, what you're saying is, I'll fight him if I get two-thirds or three-quarters of the money, and they say, I'm not going to give you that. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm not here to talk about money. I'm just here to talk about uh, fighting the best they got out there. And, and right now, Zab is a, is, a, is a good fighter. That's a good fight for me. Uh, Winky Wright's a good fight for me. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of big names. Oscar De La Hoya this summer. So there's a lot of big fights out there. You know, I'm trying to put this fight together with Zab, but if it don't fall through, it don't matter who I fight. Thank you very much. Congratulations Thank you. again, Appreciate Floyd. It. And just, uh, just a final thought. Uh, Probably Floyd's going to have to come down a little bit in his expectations of what it's going to take to make some of some of those fights. Um, he does want <laughs> the money as well as the fights, and that that ain't going to work. Just uh, this, we were supposed to do the delayed broadcast of the uh, Klitschko Rockman fight tonight. Obviously, there was no Klitschman Klitschko Rockman fight, so there's no rebroadcast. But I thought. I bring you a little bit up to date about what's going on in the heavyweight division. The way we hear it is that Haseem Rachman is supposed to fight James Tony next, and Vladimir Klitschko will fight either Lamont Brewster or Chris Bird. And there's a lot of negotiating and maybe some lawsuits standing in the way before any of that happens. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry. Roy Jones, let's go back for a moment to the subject of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Because Mitchell's a southpaw, some people could have seen this as a dress rehearsal for fighting Zab Judah, but it's really two different worlds, isn't it? Well, it's two different worlds in a sense, but I still think it was somewhat of a dress rehearsal. And um, he can make more money, Mayweather can, for fighting the older names, notably Del Oya, maybe Shane Mosley, maybe Fernando Vargas, if Vargas is able to beat Mosley. Are those guys going to fight him, or should he just go take, take the Zab Judah fight? I don't think they're going to fight him. I think those guys are looking to fight guys that are more on their level, who have been in the game a little bit longer, and is around their age category. I think he should go ahead and fight Zab Judah because they are pretty much on the same incline right now. Zab is a super fighter. Uh, he has super hand speed, just like Floyd does. The public would want to see a fight like that because those guys are closer to one another than, say, a Shane Mosley or Fernando Vargas. And the final question, is Floyd a full-time welterweight now, or if the opportunity arose to fight Ricky Hatton at 140 pounds or Costa Zoo at 140 pounds or Miguel Cotto, would he go back down and do it? I doubt it. I think Floyd is getting up out of that 140 pound division to go see what he can do elsewhere because he's looking for bigger fights, guys who are a little bit older that he knows he can take advantage of. And if a big fight arises, I'm sure he'll drop down to it, but I don't see it happening. All right. Stick with us because immediately following this, we're going to be taking you to our live, or excuse me, our first telecast, the premier telecast of the countdown to Taylor Hopkins, too. In the meantime, we'll have a final word on what happened in boxing here in just a moment. Let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO. He knows. We must act soon. He thinks we are cowards. Guards can keep my enemies away. They can do nothing about my friends. This is not some cheap murder. It must be done honorably with our own hand. You present me with a dilemma. What am I to do with you? <laughs> We must reckon with Lucius Farinas. I will make you suffer slowly and deeply. You will make a lot of men very angry. Don't miss the season finale. Do it. Rome, Sunday at 9. December 3 on HBO Pay-Per-View. It's the rematch between Jermaine Taylor and Bernard Hopkins with the middleweight title at stake. One week later, World Championship Boxing returns with Winky Wright in his first fight since dismantling Felix Trinidad, taking on Sam Solomon. Next on HBO, stay tuned for Countdown to Taylor Hopkins 2. And now for our entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from the Rose Garden in Rip City, Portland, Oregon.
This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.